polymyositis and dermatomyositis are commonly put together because they are very similar in presentation. They are both autoimmune disorders caused by antibodies against the one's self. These antibodies attack the muscles and different cell components. Specifically, we have the anti-JO1 antibody, which is an antibody against the tRNA synthetase. Also, the anti-SRP, or the signal recognition particle, and the anti-MI2, which is an antibody against the helicase enzyme. These are highly specific for both polymyositis and dermatomyositis. Now we have some other antibodies that are less specific and we see them with most autoimmune disorders. And these include, of course, ANA or the anti-nuclear antibodies. Because the muscles are involved, we use CK to monitor the patient's response and the progression of the disease. The higher the CK, the worse the symptoms. Also, high CK indicates failure of treatment. Besides CK, there's also another enzyme that increases, which is known as aldolase. This is not very common and not very specific. Polymyositis is characterized by the symmetrical proximal muscle weakness. This mainly involves the thighs and the shoulders. The patient will present with a progressive weakness and pain in these areas. It typically presents in middle-aged patients, and the patient will say something like difficulty climbing the stairs or getting out of the chair. Keep in mind that this condition involves the muscles themselves, so the nerves are preserved, so the reflexes are preserved. If we take a sample under the microscope, we will see endomesial inflammation with CD8 T-cell infiltration. Rarely, but very importantly, polymyositis can be associated with myocarditis or interstitial lung disease. Dermatomyositis presents with the same muscular symptoms in addition to the skin symptoms. That's where you get the dermato part. You will get the same muscular symptoms, except that if you take a biopsy, you will see CD4 cell infiltration not CD8. Characteristically, there will also be perimesial inflammation and microvascular attack. So the vessels that supply the muscles will also be damaged. In the skin, we have the symptoms of malar rash that we see in the SLE, gotrum papules, which are very common and very specific, and these are red papules or erythematous lesions that we see in the knuckles area. Also, heliotrope rash, which is redness around the eyes. This condition is very commonly associated with pre-existing tumors. So if the diagnosis is made, look for the occult tumor somewhere else, most commonly the ovaries. It can also be associated with extramuscular symptoms, such as interstitial lung disease, vasculitis, or myocarditis. In any case, the treatment for polymyositis and dermatomyositis are very similar. Once the patient has an acute attack, we use IV steroids, and for long-term treatment, the patient has to be put in immunosuppressant therapy, like methotrexate, for example. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards. You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.